Hi guys, hello, how are we doing? Happy Friday night. We are talking Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. There is a lot going on with Diana Jenkins. I don't know if you guys are aware of everything that is allegedly going around about her right now and possibly being fired and her contract not being renewed and allegations of child, uh, I don't even know if I can use a language that they're accusing her of, um, it is serious. So anyways, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, guys. We want to talk about the bacon eating vegetarian and the fact that um, Denise Richards did not come to the party and how basically Bravo expects these women to like work for free and appear um, at parties and such and cause conflict, but they don't want to pay them. Um, allegedly, Kelly Dodd told a story about Tamara being invited to one of Heather DeBro's parties and Tamara thought it was strange because, you know, she doesn't really speak to Heather like that and she never you know, goes to parties at Heather's house and she got invited, but it was really because Tamara wanted her or Heather wanted Tamara to start drama with Shannon. And Tamara was like, if I'm not getting paid, I'm not going. Why would I go do Heather's work for free? Basically. So it's the same situation here. Denise probably didn't want to show up to Garcelle's birthday party because of the fact that she wasn't getting paid and she didn't want to film with Bravo for free and basically give them free content of her at Garcelle's birthday party for free. So allegedly, like, Evolution Production, um, you know, has an option. They can, like, write up a contract for an event where they would just pay, you know, the housewife a flat rate. And then um, they would appear on the show. So they could have paid Denise, like, a $25,000 flat rate for that episode and just filmed her at Garcelle's birthday party. Um, one thing I missed was the fact that Diana and her fiance were wearing matching fur coats. Did anyone else catch that? Um, at the very beginning, anyone notice that? I did not notice that they had matching fur coats on. Um, definitely made note of the fact that her purse was worth over a quarter of a million dollars. And there were like people commenting that they felt like she was protective of the purse um, when she when they were making their rounds and they were saying hello to everyone and they were going to say hello to Garcelle. Um, like, Diana seemed nervous and her fiancé asked if he she wanted him to take the bag to the car and she said no. So some people are kind of taking that as, like, she was being offensive, like she thought someone was going to steal her bag. So her fiancé said, like, let's lock it in the car instead. So... I don't know what's going to happen. Um, she also made a post on Instagram, Diana did, and she addressed it to Garcelle. Um, is anyone commenting? I'm just not seeing the comments on accident. Are you guys commenting? Anyone commenting? I'm just not seeing them. Nobody? Okay, maybe I just wasn't seeing them. Hey, chocolate. Sorry, I wasn't seeing the text messages. Or not the text messages, um, the comments. Anyways, um, yeah, they're talking about firing Diana and basically just not renewing her contract because she wrote um, a note to Garcelle basically on Instagram and she brought up the fact that she was part of like the Bill and Hillary Clinton. Hey, LA. Hey, Ellen. Hi, Scorpio Queen and Beverly. I'm glad you guys can make it tonight. Um, I had to work, so that's why I had to keep pushing the time back. I apologize for that, but I'm glad that you guys made it. Anyways, she wrote this Instagram and she addressed it to Garcelle and she brought up the fact that she had done so much uh, work in Haitia and how she had donated so much money and she is allegedly affiliated with the Bill and Hillary Clinton um, like fundraiser that they were doing whenever that hurricane hit. Um, but since then, people, there's a lot of accusations around um, the Bill and Hillary Clinton Foundation. And the, ha the Haitian people don't appreciate the Clintons. They actually don't like them. And they 
probably know more than we do about their business down there and what they were actually doing. And so it's strange that Diana would affiliate herself with that. And then she would point out the fact that Garcelle is from Haiti, knowing that she is affiliated with Bill and Hillary Clinton, who are allegedly affiliated with trafficking children out of Haiti. Um, during this time period, I think that that was a little bit strange because it's kind of common knowledge that everyone knows that. And she's like affiliating it with, I don't know. I just thought that was really strange. And then people are co-signing for her on Instagram. Like they're messaging in support of her, like people that are like kind of famous, but not really, you know, and Elton John, of course, did a video and, you know, showing his support for her. So allegedly, like Bravo, you know, they want, they're nervous. I mean, they talked about um, the black creator comment. Hey, LA, they shut down the organization when the county started investigating it. Um, yeah, there was a woman that was like caught trafficking children. There was, there was like five of them. They were like missionaries and they were like held in jail until they got out. And then that lady became, like, head of the Amber Alert. But um, I also wanted to bring up the fact that Sutton was talking about Elton John. I'm shocked. I expected more from him. Yeah, him and his husband, him and the husband talked about how she was, like, such a great um, contributor to the AIDS Foundation, um, like, that she had helped start it with him. And this is the same AIDS foundation that allegedly Lisa and Harry had attended um, his foundation party every year for the viewing of the gala. Um, but he didn't say anything about Lisa Renna. And people are wondering why is Lisa Renna going so hard in favor of Diana, especially if Diana is, you know, being associated with racism and child um, allegations of being a madam and maybe she has a good side and a bad side maybe it's possible um but it seems strange that Lisa would still be in such um like support of her like she is going hard for her did you guys see the messages that Lisa Rana posted on Instagram basically calling fans hoes and I don't even know if I can say the word p-u-s-s-i-e-s um, talking about go watch Dubai. I mean, she's offending people right and left. She's like a Kanye 2.0. Like, they're going to take her phone from her, I feel like. She is being super offensive on Instagram um, to viewers and to the ladies of Dubai. Um, they're offended as well, and they're tweeting back their comments. So it just seems strange. Why would Lisa go so hard for Diana? Lisa is just a groupie. Possible, or maybe Diana has dirt on her. Possibly Diana's paying her, guys. I think Lisa Renna is the one that needs the job the most. I saw them. I hope that her last session, I can't stand her. Um, it's possible that she's paying Lisa Renna. Like, I think out of all of them, Lisa Renna probably needs the job as much as Erica I mean, her and Harry, Harry doesn't bring in any money at all. And they have like three mortgages out on their house in L.A., three. So obviously they, you know, aren't, you know, rolling in the money. So that's why I think she works so hard to keep her job. But I just can't believe she's like, she never rolled that hard for Denise. She never rolled that hard for anyone else except for Erica, kind of. Um, but even so, like I said, Lisa's on Instagram calling fans pussies and hoes. I mean, talking about, of course, they have dirt on each other. Everyone in Bel Air knows this. See, that makes sense. Um, and, and Lisa was in the book, you know, the book 23, room 23, the one that she gave Garcelle for Garcelle's birthday, which seemed a little strange. She like put it had it like surrounded in flowers and like candles and presented it to Garcelle and autographed it. So it seemed a little, um, I don't even know what the word would be, but it just seemed a little like self-loathing kind of because she talked about how it was so hard to come across and 
Lisa made money off that book, if you know what I mean. Well, I do know what you mean. I think that Lisa was probably sleeping with rich men for money, too, even though she was married to Harry because Harry was in Canada. The Real Housewives of Dubai dragged Lisa. Yes, she is a strange bird. Um, I definitely think that Lisa was probably sleeping or hustling rich men. Um, there was a new blind item that came out about Diana and it speaks about the fact that she was actually not raised, um, poor, that she has people from her past and she like disconnected with them immediately when she started the show because she didn't want anything coming up like allegedly that her boyfriend bought her a BMW when she was like 18 years old and that she was like well traveled and she had girlfriends and they would go to like high end resorts. Hey Addison, and they would look for rich men that they could sleep for for money or hustle for money. Why are you sideways? I don't, am I sideways for you guys? I'm sorry, I meant to do it the other way. I hope my headphones can still work this way. Hold on. It's like if I don't start it sideways, then it won't, um, you know, film right. I'm sorry, guys. It's situated here. Anyways, it's basically talking about... Whoops. <laughs> um, it's basically talking about... Bam, perfect. Thank you, Addison. Because let me go talk sideways for 20 minutes. No one told me. <laughs> You're good now. Thanks, Beverly. Um, allegedly she was driving a BMW. Her and her girlfriend would travel high end resorts with her mother. Lisa needs to go get hard for her face. It's up in stock. <laughs> um, I know one of the housewives from Dubai told her that she needed, what did she say? Something about her lips. It was a good one though. Diana is sadistic. It's just bubbling to come out. The ugly is on its way. I agree with you. Did you guys see their conversation with Mauricio and Kyle? Hello, housewife. Hi, chocolate. Um, hello, chocolate again. <laughs> um, the conversation between Mauricio and um, Kyle and Diana and her husband or her fiance, if you will, seemed very strange did you guys not think it was really strange when she talked about how she was just gonna take it slow and Mauricio was like yeah take it slow just take it all in before you you know make a decision and then she said you go in and then you just kill him that's what she said she said kill him you like go in for the kill basically that's what she said and then she like laughed like an evil laugh and you could see, like, Mauricio and Kyle look at each other like, did she just say kill them? <laughs> I mean, I caught it. I watched it back twice, and that's what she said. And then you go in for the kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what she said. Why was Mauricio in that conversation? I don't know. Mauricio is always wherever Kyle is. She seems evil. She does. And Kyle seemed drunk ATF at that party. Africa called and wants their lips back. Yes, chocolate. That's what it was. Hilarious. I love that one. That was my favorite. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. She probably, I feel like Lisa Renna, I don't know. She's probably just trying to earn a paycheck. She's like getting, you know, paid from Bravo and paid from Diana. Kyle was very interesting this episode. Yes, she was, and it made me feel like Kathy has done it, seems like. Alan, she never even started. I mean, it's like, where's Waldo, but where's Kathy? You know what I'm saying? We haven't seen her at all. She supposedly demanded all this money from Bravo, and we haven't even seen her yet. She hasn't made an intro or nothing, but... Guys, don't you think it was strange how Kyle was, like, wearing a bodysuit with, like, the sheer over it, and she was, like, kind of being a little... Diana seems like a psycho to me. She's definitely a piece of shit. <laughs> how much money? Um, Kyle was, like, spreading her legs bald eagle, like, a lot. Like, did you guys... Kathy was filming her Paris special. I don't know. Kyle was acting like she needed a new man. Thank you, Alan. That's exactly what I was trying to say, but in a different way. You're exactly right. Kyle was acting like she needed a new man. She was, like, spreading her legs, and she was pulling up, like, 
I don't know. Even Dorito was trying to keep her legs closed. Kyle wore that outfit just so she could do those splits. I know. I know. But she was, like, being a little bit, like, a little bit more, um, like I said, sexual and spreading her legs. She even spread her legs on the couch. That's Kyle's favorite dance. She even spread her legs on the couch. Diana should add Kyle to the book. Her demanding ass can stay at home. <laughs> Um, she was like laying on the couch and she spread her legs and even Dorito was like, close your legs, Kyle. Diana is Bosnian war criminal. I've heard that. I've heard that, Samantha. Mauricio wasn't even looking at her. I know. And that's why I think, guys, when there was all these rumors that they were separated and that they were getting divorced, I think that was the case. And then I think Kyle was busting it wide open. She was. She seriously was. Um... I would be embar- I would have been embarrassed. She looked trashed. Um, Kyle will be next to get an OnlyFans account. Well, I think they got the deal with Netflix, and of course they're probably contracted to stay together. They can't turn around and get a divorce and keep that deal with Netflix because I'm sure it's like a family dynamic type show. I hear he likes men. I hear he likes yes, yeah. I think that he likes yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that. And, like, threesomes, and we talked about, like, the transgender sh- that wrote a book about their experience in, in the Hollywood prostitution world, and how many times um, she had dealt with Mauricio, and she was off for sure. Yeah, she was definitely, yes, Mauricio, um, she was definitely off a thousand percent for sure. She was acting like she was looking for a new man. She was busting it wide open so much. So like I said, even Dorito was like, Kyle, close your legs. Like you are spreading your legs like a crazy lady. He likes chicks with dicks. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, you can get any sort of you know, Hollywood is like a CD place. There's a lot of things. What's the name of the book? I can't remember chocolate, but it's posted under the community. I took a screenshot of the cover of it. Hollywood is effed up. Yep. Pedos, deep secrets. Addison is a hundred percent right. Like there's a lot of people are in a lot of crazy, weird things. And it's like normal in Hollywood. Like nothing's crazy in Hollywood. Nothing. Um, the book is, I don't remember the name Chocolate, but it's posted under um, the community. I, like, took a screenshot of it, and I posted the actual cover so you guys could see it. Um, and it's posted under community, so you should definitely be able to find it there. Um, yeah, Diana is, it's, like, not looking good for her. And Erica looking a hot mess. Yes, she did look a hot mess. She looked like she was in, like... Um, a TJ Maxx dress is what she looked like she was wearing, a TJ Maxx dress. And Kelly Dodd claimed she was wearing, no problem, um, what some kind of fancy vintage belt that um, Kelly Dodd had the same one, so she had to pull it out. I couldn't remember. I want to say, and Amir, Amara, I think Kyle and Erica were consuming the same stuff. Horrible. I think that Kyle is like her sister and her mother, and I think that she drinks more than we realize. I think she just, you know, plays it off as, like, the good time girl. She's, like, the good time girl, just like she said on vacation. Like, don't these girls want to have fun? And, um, you know, her and the lady, a couple of the ladies head to the bar. Um, Kim, even when they get in that fight in the limo, says something about... Um, Kyle drinking every day. Yeah, I think she's just like the good time girl. And you know, don't forget guys, when her and PK and Dorita were all hanging out, um, like when they were allegedly going to do this like agency type um, like reality show in London with PK and these realtors and the agency and it was going to be international and whatever happened, it fell through, but Kyle and PK and Dory and Mauricio were hanging out all the time, and they were taking vacations to Mexico together, and they were always posting, like, drinking and, like, playing music and just dancing around, and everyone was commenting about how it seemed like they were, like, skiing because they were, like, messed up for sure. I'm no hater and not to body shame, but Erica has gained weight and her style is just making her look bigger. Kyle and Kathy tried to play the good girl, but they are the worst ones. 
Absolutely. I agree with you a thousand percent. I think Kyle is like the good time girl. She just plays it off. And I think that, that Kathy does the same exact thing. Kathy does the same exact thing. I think Kathy set the example for them because she was married to Rick and because they did, they, you know, because they did skiing, they thought that that was like high end drinking. It went, you know, together with drinking and it was normal and they did it, you know, and they partied all the time and they didn't make a big deal about it. And they still, you know, had lots of money and nannies to take care of their children. And if you guys read the book um, about the Hilton, you read about how, like, Kathy's would just leave Paris with, like, anyone, basically. And she would, you know, just say, like, I'll be right back. And then, like, not come back the whole day. Um, there was, like, a distant cousin that talked about Kathy doing it. There were people at the hotel business that would say that Rick and Kathy would show up on the busiest weekend, demand the nicest hotel room, the works, like, wine, cheese trays, whatever. And then, of course, free child care for Paris, even if that meant, um, like, having to get the seamstress, the hotel seamstress, to work double over the weekend and take care of Paris um, because they had to provide child care for Rick Hilton's daughter. And then Rick and Kathy would just stay gone all weekend out drinking and partying and having, you know, the time of their life. So that's the kind of mother um, that I think Kathy was, especially in her younger years, probably a lot like her own mother, um, except her children were, you know, taken care of a little bit better because they were, I guess, spoiled. I don't know which one, which, uh, you know, growing up, <laughs> which would have been better. Um, but I think her Kathy was a lot like her mother. I see why Paris resented her for so long. Yeah. I mean, it's in the book a lot about Kathy's parenting. And this was written before we knew about the whole school um, that they sent Paris to when they had her, like, basically kidnapped in the middle of the night and taken to a school in Utah. Um, they came in in the middle of the night while it was dark, and she just thought it would, you know, you would just wake up in the middle of the night to four random men coming to take you out of your bedroom, and they are, you know, dressed in all black, and they take you into a van. Like, you don't even know what's going on. That would be a really scary experience. And then even the other children talk about how... It was a scary experience for them because they also had no idea what was going on. And they just saw, like, Paris hauled off by, like, four men in, you know, ski masks and black outfits. And the parents just said, don't worry about it. Go to bed. Like, that would be strange, at, to say the least, I would think. And, you know, Paris talks about how this was especially whenever they moved to New York City because she was out going to, like, raves and there really wasn't a lot that um, Rick and Kathy could do because she was getting into a lot of underground nightclubs and running with a rough crowd. And that's why, you know, Kathy, like, stands by her decision that she sent Paris. But, of course, she feels bad now that she knows um, the abuse that they endured. Same with Sonia Morgan from New York. Did she send her daughter there? I didn't know that. Bravo, Utah has had that reputation. It's tragic. It's so tragic that these, you know, I mean, it's like you can't just trust your kids with anyone. Like, you can't, I don't know. It's like a nursing home. If you have, like, an old person in a nursing home, they always say, like, the family should show up at random times, never show up at, like, the same time every day, every week, because... Um, you don't want to be predictable because they, the staff will learn that. And yes, sent her away for years. I did not know that. I did know that after she turns 25, JP Morgan doesn't have to support her anymore. Paris, I didn't know that, Alan. I thought that she just endured like physical abuse and like the um, abuse of like isolation, like 48 hours in like a closet or something crazy like that. I don't know if it was sexual um to Europe not even the states wow that's terrible like I said I did hear that like part of the divorce was that he um would have no financial obligations to her after she turned 25 that the dad the Morgan father had no would have no financial obligations to Sonia or the daughter after the daughter turns 25 
So I don't know how that'll go because I don't think that they get along with the dad. I mean, he's old. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't even think that he has to leave her in the will even. Like, he has no financial obligation to her after she turns 25. So I'm not really sure what that looks like. But it looks like a really, really bad deal that Sonia got when she got divorced, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm sure she signed a prenup, but damn. Um, I know, isn't that terrible? I felt bad for the daughter. I hope they, they didn't save up. Alan, they didn't save up. No, you know Sonia's been trying to sell that townhouse for like 10 years. Then she was renting it out. <laughs> Poor Sonia. I love her though. I hope she gets a, a, Bethany Frankel, that was one of her stipulations, um, that if she came back, Sonia Morgan had to come back. And I really appreciate Bethany for that. Um, I don't know much about Sonia. I love Sonia. She has a good heart. But Bethany Frankel, like I said, made that one of the stipulations that Sonia had to come back if she was going to come back. So I was like, you know what? That is a good friend. That's a G. That's like someone that rides with you. You know what I mean? Like, that's a good ass friend that says, I'm not coming back to Bravo unless you bring my friend back too. <laughs> so, um, I don't know who's rooting for Ramona to come back. I don't know. She, I hear she's like living in Palm Beach, Florida, um, living the life down there with the Trumpers and, you know, Sonia is fun. She is fun. She really, really is. Um, don't touch the Morgan papers. I know. Remember Luna? I like Ramona. Of course you do, Alan. You like Erica, so of course you love Ramona. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, did you guys always, ever hear that rumor about Ramona making out with um, her daughter's date at her, like, high not high school, I'm sorry, college dance? This makes me like Bethany more. Exactly. Um, yeah, Ramona made out with the daughter's date for, like, some kind of, I don't even know, it was, like, some dance when she was in college to, like, get into, it was, like, a sorority dance or something, and Ramona, they were taking photos, and, like, some kind of conversation got brought up, and she ended up, like, making out with Avery's date, um, to the, you know, event, and I guess, you know, Avery wasn't upset about it because they were, like, joking about it. And he was, you know, they were in college. But um, I still think Ramona is taking too much estrogen. <laughs> I still think it would be a little uncomfortable for, I mean, some people laugh about that. But some people would find that, you know, a little strange because, I mean, even if it, they were in college, they were still, like, in their very early 20s. These people make me appreciate my nice family life. They can't have it. Oh, that's so funny, Beverly. Yeah, she just made out with Avery's date, you know, like it was nothing, no big deal, just making out with college kids that, you know, photo time <laughs> with other people's family there. Other kids were there getting there. Like, there was a whole group of them. It wasn't just, like, Avery and her date and Ramona. It was, like, all of these people. Yeah. Uh, she's a mess. She's a mess. But she's in the Hamptons now. So, no worries. She's in the Hamptons. She was giving us some great drunken snaps from the Hamptons, Hamptons the last couple of weeks. Um, so, she's back from Florida. So, wonderful spending her time in the Hamptons. I'm not surprised. Um, what else would I want to talk about? Diana's quarter of a million dollar handbag. Was Ramona prom queen too? Who knows? I don't know if that, I don't know if she was. Um, I forget. I wanted to tell you guys something else. Oh my gosh. Oh, the baking, eating vegetarian. Can you guys believe that Diana keeps saying that to Sutton? Do you guys feel like it is serious that Sutton says she's a vegetarian and she eats bacon and this is like a common thing? Do you guys think that's the case? And, or is it offensive that Sutton says she's a vegetarian but she eats bacon sometimes and owns it? I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, also, 
Did you like the new girl? And did you think that they let us know enough times that she was married to Will Smith and that Garcelle dated Will Smith? Because I felt like they didn't tell us that enough. Like 20 times they told us, okay? Ah, 20 times. And Ramona has probably had the worst childhood ever, so I'm rooting for her. Addison, I also have heard that she had a very bad childhood, so I'm rooting for her, too. I'm just teasing, you you know, just teasing her too many times. Um, the handbag, um, who cares about the bacon? Right, exactly. I just felt like she, Diana, no matter what Sutton said, she was going to be rude to her. She was already, like, prepared to be rude to her. Um, Kelly Dodd on the Rick and Kelly review said that it was probably in Diana's contract that she had to attend the event. So that's probably why she went. Um, if the case was that she, you know, was on bed rest, um, because of the miscarriage, but it does seem a little strange because you think that Bravo would accommodate something like that. If you're on bed rest from your doctor that, you know, that starts like an FMLA leave, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe she didn't want to take a leave because she still wanted to film, but she just, I don't know, had to film the event. I don't know. I don't know why she would go and show up in fur coats, matching fur coats with her fiance. Like, people are saying that they're, you know, getting, like, kind of gay vibes from the guy. Um, and, you know, his hair was um, down. He had that hat on. And he looked very different from the way that we saw him um before when he had like the hair and the man bun he was like you know swimming in his shorts diana is really reaching for a controversy she is reaching for a controversy i think so too i think so too and but she didn't realize the controversy that was going to be coming for her online after she made those racist comments to um that account sutton was being rude at first um He's definitely gay, very metro feminine for sure. I think so too, Addison. Um, yeah. Uh, the blind also was just talking about how her childhood was like not what she is making out to be, that she didn't grow up a poor Bosnian child. Um, that's an allegation also. And it also says that she has a couple of friends that were best friends with her all of these years and that, you know, hustled with her. Just kind of how, like, strippers kind of look out for each other. It was, like, the same deal except they were, like, hustling old men and sleeping with, you know, rich old older men, basically. And so these women know a lot about Diana and a lot about her transactions of when she was more younger and it doesn't fit the scenario of a poor Bosnian, you know, concubine or refugee. Um, and so she's like cut ties with them because of course she doesn't want, um, to ruin her look, her brand, her whatever she is trying to, I mean, why is she even on the show guys? She has all this money. It doesn't even make sense. Why, you know, that's like a job. It's a job to people. Like you got to get up and go to it. You have obligations, you know, you have notes, you have whatever you have, like, it's still a job, so it's just, why are you even on the show, is it for your image, is it for attention, is it to feed your own ego, like, why are you even on the show, especially if you have all of these allegations out there that are, like, super easy to find, like, I had seen them before she even came on the show, I just didn't want to come out with them like first and have her, like, attack me, because I was, like, a little nervous, I mean, she's, like, allegations of like child trafficking allegations of Jeffrey Epstein she was bored that was probably why she joined I know but she like hung out with Kim Kardashian and I just feel like she saw Kim film all those years and she never once filmed to be on the show which is strange because Kim always has her friends film just like Larsa Pittman um you know the twins like they always hook their friends up so strange number one that she wouldn't film on that reality show um, but then she would go film on the Beverly Hills Housewives. So I feel like she wanted to be like the Kim Kardashian of the Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills because she saw Kim be, you know, this boss and this executive producer and this, you know, she had to be filmed and this and that. And I feel like Diana wanted a piece of that for herself, but she didn't want to have to go through Kim to get it. So 
she probably struck a deal. Who knows what the deal was that she was going to bring all this extravaganza to, um, you know, the franchise because they're always looking for that, of course. But again, we run into the issue that if you have a housewife that doesn't need a job, they bail on us. They miss events. They don't want to give all the information. They get a cease and desist. They get an attorney. They end up not telling us. You know what I mean? And that leaves the viewers high and dry. And we hate that because people like Teresa Judice and her husband who were fighting legal battles and then going to prison, they showed us their entire lives. Everything. They showed us everything because they needed the effing money. Okay. So it worked out because we got to see, you know, there was no stone left unturned by the time we had seen, by the time Teresa went to prison and came home and then Joe went to prison and then went to ISIS and then it came to Italy and then they did the special. There was no stone left unturned. Okay. Like we saw everything from that family and we appreciate it. Like we kind of, I kind of teared up when they leave their, left their house and they like did all those flashbacks and people even say that's why she's like the OG, you know, like they'll show clipbacks of her kids and it'll make people cry because we like watched Gia grow up, you know? Um, and so I just think that's, you know, a great housewife. What makes a great, you cannot have a housewife that's too rich. There's also, I heard about today, Epstein 8. Yes, they keep, well, they're saying she's affiliated with Epstein, but there was a photo going around on Twitter that was a blonde lady shaking hands with Epstein and Donald Trump was in the photo, and people were saying that was Diana, but it was later allegedly debunked that it was not Diana, but can we really trust the people that debunked it? Probably not. If she was friends with the Clintons, then she probably was friends with Epstein, because we know Bill Clinton was on Epstein's log multiple times multiple multiple times right okay then if you have a bunch of rich friends they probably all know each other right they all run in the same circle you don't have a lot of billionaires and millionaires walking around so if they want to run in their own type of circle of people at their level then it's a tight circle you know, you don't have pe- a lot of people that just are making millions and millions of dollars. So the people that are, that stay in the game, they continue to make that sort of money. They want to hang out with other people that make that kind of money too. So it's very possible that um, she has ties to Epstein. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. Maxwell says she's going to give us all of the names if they don't um, knock down her prison sentence. So... <laughs> Uh, she says she's going to start releasing people's names, so maybe she'll be on it. Who knows? That's what we're saying, Diana. Why would you come on this show? It doesn't make any sense to anyone. If you have any sort of illegal activity in your background, it's going to be brought out. And the fact that Bravo either A, missed this, or B, thought it was totally cool is beyond me. Because if I could find the articles and I could find the blind items before she even came, like even before they aired the show than Bravo could have. She will just be suicided. Exactly. Unalived is basically the word they use. Yes. So I think Diana is very high up in the food chain. Um, I think that she probably started at the bottom and worked her way up and probably used to have to do, you know, the physical um, work of the job and then probably she grew into more of a madam of other girls um something like Maxwell would do which would be recruit women um allegations of recruiting children um allegations of um forcing children to do unlawful acts I don't even know what how you even word stuff like that but these are the allegations going around about her um it's scary guys it's it's really scary that if she is someone that does things like that and she's able to get into Bravo and come in and try to come over our television screens and act like this normal average like rich lady and really you're trafficking children that's like crazy to me is that not crazy to everyone else because that just blows my mind 
literally it blows my mind because if we uncover all of this and Bravo fires her and then nothing happens, like it's just another disappointment in our judicial system. I don't know guys, just like the, the civil case where she sued her former employee for allegedly like, um, you know, overstepping boundaries and going into her private living quarters. And it just seems so strange. Like, are you hiding people or something in your living quarters? Do you have people, do you have sex slaves locked in the closet? Like, I don't know what you have going on, but it just seems a little strange that it's so um, excessive for you that you would literally sue an ex-employee over it. Crazy that Bravo would investigate her 100% before giving her a contract. I agree with you. I mean, I think that probably executives at all of the three-letter, you know, big networks probably are sick people too, and maybe that's how she got in I don't know. People are, I don't know. People are making allegations about Andy Cohen being racist now. It's just getting bad. Um, he did bring up, like I said, the um, blogger that she, you know, made the racial comments to. So I was actually shocked that Andy brought that up on Watch What Happens Live with Garcelle. So I was very happy to see that. Um, but I'm going to continue digging on Diana and, and just seeing what um, she's been up to and posting and what I can find. But I just want to come on, do a live with you guys, talk Beverly Hills, because it's just just so crazy out there. So, happy Friday night. I hope all of you guys have a great weekend, and maybe we can get together tomorrow um, and talk. Every liberal is a racist, period. Ugh, Addison, I don't hope that's not the case. They bravo like numbers and money. I know, I know, I know. I know they do. That's what it's about, the numbers. I know, it's so terrible. But they have this lawsuit with Nene Leak, so I feel like they have to clean up their reputation a little bit because now, you know, they had to fire the lady from Salt Lake City for her racist comments. Thank you, too, Addison. I'm glad you got to come in on a live. It was nice to chat with you. Um, Nene suing them. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just not a good look for them at all. And for Andy Cohen. He doesn't look great right now either. Just saying. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's all distraction for Kathy Hilton. Maybe Kathy's paying Diana to distract everyone from when she comes on and uses her racial slurs um, at people. I mean, I don't know. Is that the case? We have to get rid of Kathy and Diana because they're both racist. My goodness, that's insane to me. I don't know, guys. Maybe they're just uneducated, like Garcelle said. Is it possible she, they're just all uneducated, like Garcelle said? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. All right, guys. Well, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, put your notifications on. If you didn't have your notifications on, turn them on now because you never know when I'm coming live, talking housewives. Dane is richer than Kathy. She doesn't need her money. That's true. Um, but Lisa Renna needs her money. So <laughs> Lisa Renna is probably on Kathy's payroll and Diana's payroll. I swear she probably is. She probably has to like make a lot of moves behind the scenes. That's probably why she's such an asshole all the time because it takes a lot of work to make manipulate a lot of people. And that's what she has to do. Master manipulator. Lisa Renna. Um... I posted her Instagrams on my Instagram if you're interested in seeing them. HW Historian on Instagram.com. And, um, yeah, so I just hope you guys have a great weekend. And like I said, maybe you guys can chat Saturday or Sunday. Real Housewives of Atlanta. I can't wait. I love the ladies of Atlanta. Lisa said she's set for life because of her diapers commercials. Her dusters and her diapers. D dusters and diapers. Yes, I love that dig. LVP, see, that's priceless. That was priceless. That's why you got to love LVP. You don't got to love her, but you got to respect her, right? 100% for those kind of comments. Dusters and diapers. Lisa Renna, that's all you selling out here. Dusters and diapers. All right, guys. Have a great weekend.